All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a quick video on something I found. <clears throat> so uh, basically, I did some testing. I discovered what the DR is um, for uh, stuns for Paladin and Classic World of Warcraft. And it's actually uh, somewhere between 15 and 16 seconds. And for this reason, you can start doing stuff like this. So my bop is going to last 10 seconds. My grenade stun is going to last 3 seconds. And my hodge stun is 5 seconds. And my repent is 6 well, what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stun the target for three seconds. Okay, we have to wait until the stun is, is gone. Okay, then I bop, and I wait out the ten seconds of bop. <clears throat> then I'm going to repent the target. Okay, bop is gone. Repent. And by the time repent comes off a of cooldown, I should be able to f uh, fully stun them. Yeah, so you can see the stun has, has no um, uh, DR to it whatsoever. Okay. Okay, hopefully they didn't pause the video. All right, cool. So, basically, um, I was going to make some, some PvP guide videos. I just wanted to, to showcase that really fast before um, actually starting the vid. Um, but I was going to do some PvP guide videos, and I wanted to start with, um, with uh, Deep Retribution Paladin, Paladin um, stuff for Season of Discovery. And... Uh, that led me into an insane rabbit hole, as I'm sure a lot of you Deep Red Paladins are aware of at this point, of, like, what runes do I take, and what combinations, and um, what talents are best, and, and wh uh, what tactics do I use, and why. Like, like, like help me out here. Like, like, what is the best combination of things to do? And this, of course, led me to start asking simple questions like, wait a minute, Repent's not on... on it's a six-second... Um, stun, basically. <clears throat> uh, brain's not working. Uh, repent lasts six seconds, but it's not DR'd with anything else. So the question immediately uh, came to mind is, well, how long does our, our DR actually last, and would you want to offensively bubble it all? So in actual classic World of Warcraft, this is a line of play that you would not want to take, but in theory you could do it as a deep rep paladin. And the line of play is basically to... Uh, to catch your target with a grenade stun, uh, bitch slap them once, judge damage into them, and then when they come out of the grenade stun, uh, or basically you want to seal twist on them, when they come out of the grenade stun, the very first, uh, uh, any kind of CC they hit you with to get, to get you off of them, um, or the very first thing you don't like uh, whatsoever, you basically bubble it. And then you sit in bubble for its full duration of 12 seconds, doing damage to them, and then when you come out of the bubble, you can repent them, and then once repent is done, then you can hit them with a full six-second stun. That is a thing that you can actually do in Classic World of Warcraft as a deep rep paladin, but nobody does that because it's, 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 it's completely stupid, right? You don't gain anything out of it. It's like, okay, well, yeah, I, I get 12 seconds of bubble where I sit on top of them, but all you gain is, like, Maybe uh, two, two to three auto attacks at most, because it gives you a 100% increase on your swing timer. Um, you can judge them an extra, like you know, one and a half times. You, you, you don't gain anything out of it. So it's like, okay, I bubble. I traded bubble for like two auto attacks and and, and two judgments in in normal classic World of Warcraft. Um, whip the effing do. Uh, then I can repent and do whatever that does for me. Um, but you're only going to gain like an extra auto attack and another judgment out of the repent time. Maybe you can put a holy light into yourself. Um, then you got another six seconds of, of, of stun that you can play with um, afterwards, right? And of course, after that, if you have uh, Goblin Mortar or, or the like, you've got a, 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 a few more seconds to play with. Um, in theory, you could use a the big one bomb. Um, I can jump on over to, to the other paladin, I suppose, but uh, you could use a, the big one bomb in those six seconds and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, classic era, uh, white main, okay, yeah, let's just jump on here. I just, I just want to see the big one really fast. All right, cool, let's get on to a real paladin. Mm hmm, still out here in the Western Plague Lands? Yes, we are. All right, cool, let's pull up. Engineering, new, negatory, yes, ng. We want the boombas, not not devices. We want the boombas, explosives, the big one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make two of them. It's a little bit expensive because it costs goblin rocket fuel, but it's not that big of a deal. 
Um, the problem with this bomb, of course, is only a 10 yard range. It's a it's like a it's like a 10 yard range and has a 10 yard radius. It looks really goofy to, to throw the big one, and you have to stand still for like um, three fucking seconds while, while while you charge up the thing. But it does stun the target for five seconds. So in theory, you can stun them for six seconds and get like an extra auto attack in um, and uh, get another judgment in, and then you throw at the the big one, which you'll be rooted in place for three seconds while you throw it at them. It stuns them for another 2.5 seconds. That easily lets you get in like a, another auto attack into the target um, because while you're charging up the big one, it, it also doesn't uh, reset your auto attack uh, cooldown timer. So in theory, in, in retail, wow, <clears throat> you can chain things together like... You catch them in a grenade stun or a goblin mortar stun. Um, then you bubble the first thing you don't like seeing. You wait out the entirety of your bubble, getting whatever damage you can out of that. And then you can stun them for... Uh, repent them for six seconds. And then after those six seconds, uh, you can stun them for another six seconds. And after those six seconds, you can stun them for, for another uh, 2.5 seconds. It's a little hard to get together. Uh, chaining all that stuff together, uh, you do lose uh, some stuff in it in in era, um, but that's always been a thing that um, deep rep paladins can actually do. It just doesn't make any sense to do that in era because you can count the number of classes that 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 can't heal themselves um, on one hand. So it's like, uh, is that going to work against druids? No, they can heal. It can that was that going to work against shamans? No, they can heal. Is that going to work against priests? Uh, no, they can heal. Paladins? No, they can heal. Okay, that's that's four classes. Uh, is that going to work on rogues? Yeah, kind of. Um, is that going to work on warriors? Yeah, sure. Um, is that going to work on hunters? Absolutely. Um, is it going to work on... I think that's about it. But you can see there's not a lot of classes that you'd really want to do that, but that's always been a thing that you can do. Um, however, in Season of Discovery, they give you um, a ton of other things that you can play with. <coughs> Um, so, for example, um, bubble bubbling offensive is 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 the real deal in season of discovery because you got uh, um, you got divine storm that you can use while you're in bubble. You have crusader strike while you uh, you can use while you're in bubble. You have exorcisms you can use while you're in bubble. You have art of war um, that you can use while you're in bubble, and you have rebuke um, to tell people to shut the hell up if if that is uh, what you want to do. And so, there's really... Crusader Strike? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, you can do it. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, my point is that this offensive rotation is probably one of the more lethal things you can do as a deep red paladin in Season of Discovery. Mm. I drink of water there. I'm actually really tired. <clears throat> Had a long day today. Oh, okay. But I really wanted to make this video, so uh, here we are. Uh, do, 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 do. What do I want? I want the runes. Right. Let's go with runes. Okay. So, <clears throat> when you're running around out in the world and you're probably doing things like... Uh, like we're, we're talking PvP, um, Deep Rep Paladin here, right? Like, what are the best rune combinations? Um, there's really only a few uh, rune combinations that you can possibly use. <clears throat> Uh, you want Sheath of Light uh, predominantly uh, as a deep rep paladin. Uh, if you're a reckoning paladin, uh, you want uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, enlightened judgments more than you want um, a, a Sheath of Light. The main reason for is because Sheath of Light you need to actually bitch slap something in order for it to activate. But if you're a reckoning paladin, the sheer act of you bitch slapping something means it died. So Sheath of Light doesn't do anything for you. You're better off taking uh, Enlightened Judgments. Enlightened Judgments really does a lot for you on the spell pushback front. Um, so, for example, uh, if you have Enlightened Judgments and Exorcism, you can make uh, mages trying to sheep you a absolute living hell. Um, they can only sheep you past uh, 27 yards away. Otherwise, you can easily close the distance. Um, you'll, you'll, put, you'll punch through their... Um, their 800 HP shield with exorcism, and then your judgment pushes back their spell by like one second, and it makes the the, the sheep spell casting time uh, 2.5 seconds, and you can cover uh, like 26 yards in 2.7 um, uh, 2.5 seconds, which means you touch them and they explode. So in other words, it makes um, sheeping you as a mage almost impossible when you're using uh, enlightened judgments. 
Deep Rep Paladin doesn't really have this problem because you have Repent to play with. Um, but it's something to keep in mind that Enlightened Judgments is at it, it's nightmare fuel for for a lot of spellcasters because it does really really nasty things. Um, Elemental Shaman comes to mind as well here because they have Grounding Totem, um, and they don't like spell pushback either. So for example, they're trying to do their their nasty ranged wombo combo on you. They're trying to um, uh, do like lava bursts on you and stuff. And if you just start peppering them with like eight second enlightened judgments and like eight second um, uh, um, exorcisms, which in the future exorcism might be eight second cooldown, that's really annoying because it causes um, it, it literally causes any spell that you hit them uh, for damage with uh, to take um, uh, one second longer to cast, um, which is a super. Not to mention you're highly mobile during that one second, which is a really big problem. So, for example, um, a shaman has to root their ass in place to cast a lava burst that's a two-second spell cast, and the sheer act of you tickling them with one of these two spells makes it a three-second spell cast, and the next thing they know, you can easily like run out of range and, and start healing, which is really annoying for them. Hmm. Or more importantly, if you're a Reckoning Paladin, close the distance of the target and give them the good news. Enlightened Judgment really helps because it lets you uh, punch through Grounding Totem. So you judge to get rid of the grounding totem, you exorcism to increase the length of, of one of their spell casts, and then you reseal, and it's it just nightmare fuel for them because they can't... The, the, the distances are, are a real struggle for them, if that makes any sense. They can barely get off uh, a two-second spell cast, um, followed by a grenade, followed by their chain lightning uh, wombo combo, which is, is how they like to do it. And if you're able to increase uh, one of their spell casts by a second, it, it, it screws up their burst so badly that they're just going to um, basically die screaming. Um, but uh, Deep Red Paladin has Repent and um, <clears throat> becomes equally useful for Enlightened Judgments because you can judge away the, uh, the Grounding Totem, uh, then you can Repent the Shaman, no problem, uh, close with them, and, and basically give them the good news. Um, basically start, start beating the crap out of them. Um, but we're going to talk about how exactly you're supposed to beat the crap out of them. So Sheath of Light is amazing, and Enlightened Judgment is also amazing. Both of them um, have their place in, in PvP. I'm a huge fan of Sheath of Light under just about any and all circumstances, with the exception of like uh, serious PvP uh, like 1v1 fights in particular, or um, scenarios where I think I'm going to get into a 1v1 fight. Um, then it's it's Enlightened Judgment all the way. If you're a Reckoning Paladin to hell with Sheath of Light, uh, uh, take, take Enlightened Judgments. The only time Sheath of Light is really good as a Reckoning Paladin is if you're, like, farming out in the world, minding your own business, you know, just killing things nonstop, and then somebody judges, uh, uh, jumps you for, for a PvP contest. It's basically like they initiated a duel, except you have Sheath of Light instead of Enlightened Judgment. So it's you're going to have one of these two up, but it's important to realize that from a PvP perspective, Enlightened Judgments is, is absolutely fucking amazing because of its spell pushback um, potential. And uh, Sheath of Light is is an extraordinarily close second for reasons that we're going to talk about. So you can take one of these two, um, whether you like it or not. If uh, Blizzard ever pulls its head out its ass and decides to give enlightened judgments, like you know, increase uh, the Paladin's attack speed by like you know twenty five percent every every time you judge, if they add that to enlightened judgments, um, that, that'll just make it even better. Absolutely necessary for for PVE DPS, by the way. Um, but Blizzard's, I guess, is too stupid to realize that. Um, as a deep rep paladin, you are not going to want to use uh, Seal of Martyrdom. I know they keep buffing it into the Stratosphere. I know it has... <sighs> I know that she is normalized. Sorry, still very tired. I know that she is normal. She, she has normalization and all that stuff behind her right now. Um, you might have dreams of using like crowd manual pummeler and PvP and then time on targeting people to death because of the, the insane normalization behind her. You know, oh, I'm, a t I'm swinging a two-hander every like 1.3 seconds and it's a uh, seal of, of martyrdom is hitting for like 100% uh, weapon damage at that speed. It's, it's fucking crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Um, no. Mm. She's... Too big of an opportunity cost against um, Seal of Command. So one of the major issues uh, about Seal of Martyrdom and Seal of Command is that Seal of Command actually has a 20% spell power ratio behind her. Um, and she likes to double dip with um, Seal of Vengeance um, in particular. Um, so for example, um, 
what vengeance does to seal a command is let's say you do, let's say you have a hundred damage. I pull up a calculator here. Let's find a calc. Calculator. Thank you. All right. So let's say uh, I'm, we're we're talking about vengeance. What the fuck off? What do you want? Go to hell. Jesus Christ. Hey, shut up. Thank you. All right. Uh, what the hell was I? Vengeance. Okay. So what vengeance will do is, let's say this is your, your base damage, right? You do like 100 white damage every attack. What seal of vengeance will do with seal of command is it'll multiply that by, by 15%. So it'll increase that by 15%. But that when seal of command procs, she'll do something silly like um, she'll take 70% of that as holy damage, so she'll go, okay, cool, but then she'll also multiply that by uh, by 15%, and very quickly you can see that Seal Command actually starts hitting like a fucking truck because of the way she synergizes with Seal of Vengeance. Now, it's entirely possible that Seal of Vengeance and Seal of Martyrdom um, operate the exact same way, but where it really gets kind of scary here is... Um, Seal Command actually has a spell power ratio behind her of 20%. That doesn't sound all that scary until you begin realizing that it, it kind of starts synergizing with some other weird stuff around here. So, for example, this two-handed weapon specialization skill, <clears throat> um, what it doesn't tell you is that it increases all your seal damage by 6% and increases all your judgment damage by 6%, which, again, it might happen with Seal of Martyrdom. The, the main thing with Seal of Martyrdom is that she's opportunity costed against Seal of Command. Seal a command with a slow weapon is is like she's like eighty percent as effective as seal of martyrdom. So see, taking seal of martyrdom will increase um, your seal damage by basically something like twenty percent um, uh, currently in the game. And then you have divine storm just sitting over here, like you know, raising its hand saying, "Pick me, pick me, pick me." So it it really doesn't work all that well. Um, the other thing is, your pro if you haven't taken Light and Judgments, you're definitely taking Sheath of Light. If you take Sheath of Light in current gearing, you're going to have like uh, 440 spell power. Um, that's if you're wearing like Avengers or the traditional um, um, hybrid uh, uh, Deep re Retribution gear. Um, you end up with like 6,000 HP and like 22 uh, uh, melee critical strike chance and like 700 attack power and 150 uh, uh, base white damage and oh um and like 200 uh, and 20 spell power base and then sheath of light just comes along and says oh you have 700 um, uh, uh, attack power okay you got kings okay that's cool. Um, blah, 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 plus 200 spell power. So Sheath of Light basically comes along and says plus 200 spell power. Um, but Seal of Command starts doing something stupid with all these extra little synergies and the fact that she's a holy damage and yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah, and I forgot about uh, Sanctity Aura. Um, but they're plus 10%. Um, by the time she's done, she doesn't have a 20% spell power ratio. She has a 30% spell power ratio is the TLDR on her. So she'll literally come along and just be like, um, yeah, I'll take 30% of that. And the next thing you know, Seal of Command does like an extra 132 holy damage. It's like, what the hell? Um, like, like I said, you have 150 uh, uh, white damage is, is like your base DPS. And you might be swinging like a 3.88 speed weapon. Oh, that's cute. Um, so anyways, uh, you're lucky if your base damage is like 600 a, a, as a deep rep paladin. And... As you can see, uh, adding like 140, 130 damage to that is actually quite significant. Um, so if I take 70% from that, uh, actually, we already did the math on that with Vengeance and everything pumping it up. It was like 0.92, right? Oh, yeah, and then this, yeah, it ends up being like 100%. Just <laughs> Seal of Commands, it ends up hitting for like 100, per, uh, uh, in the grand scheme of things, like 100% weapon damage, just because it has, um, like, you know, 6% synergy here. It's got it double dips from Vengeance. It gains like 10% uh, bonus for, from the aura. She ends up being like 100% weapon damage. Um, so it actually is a fairly substantial damage increase from spell power. So rather than her hitting for 600 damage, she ends up hitting for clear, 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 um, like 740 uh, damage every time she procs. Her proc rate on average is like 42%. I think it's literally 44% of the 3.8 weapon speed, but you factor in Seal of Casino and Mischance and Dodge and all that stuff. She's got like a 40% um, proc rate. 
Um, the problem is the opportunity cost here. Seal of Martyrdom, Seal of Martyrdom is amazing. Right? Like, don't get me wrong. And they keep buffing her, which is terrifying. But she's still not Seal of Command. She, she, she's not out outperforming Seal of Command to, to the point where she is, is the pure pick. So this is a very long-winded way of saying, you're taking Divine Storm. What the hell is wrong with you? You're taking Divine Storm. You're a deep rep paladin. Please don't be stupid. Take Divine Storm. Um, the primary weakness of deep retribution paladin historically is that you're very RNG dependent because you don't have a lot of attacks. You're an auto attack Andy. Remember we started this video and I, I explained that there's this very long sequence um, that a deep rep paladin could always do. Um, however, uh, nobody ever does that because you only gain like a handful of auto attacks. You catch them with a grenade, you bitch slap them once, that's one auto attack. You bubble the first thing that comes your way and then you sit there for 12 seconds. But it, it, your auto attack timer is cut in half. So really you only get six seconds of, of auto attack time. Maybe you get two seconds of uh, 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 two auto attacks out of your um, bubble. <coughs> from that because the enemy like had to take like half a second to throw a grenade at you or or um they, they stunned you and they're casting a spell in your face or you you, you get the idea um so maybe you get uh, an extra two auto attacks out of that okay so now we've done three auto attacks and we've done like two judgments into the target um but they also had 12 seconds to do something anything what the hell were they doing for those 12 seconds um, they couldn't run away, so were they healing themselves? Were they uh, 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 using a health potion, a, a whipper root, uh, a, a tuber? Like, what were they doing during those those 12 seconds? Because if they can heal, then you got a fucking problem. But then you come out of that, and you you, um, you come out of bubble, you bitch slap them one more time, so again, that's, that's your third auto attack. Then you repent them for six seconds, uh, you go for like maybe one holy light into yourself, and then you wait for your 3.8 second auto attack timer and then you bitch slap them and you judge them again. So if you're counting, you've done like two judgments and like like four auto attacks. Um, but then you can stun them for six seconds and that'll get you like another two auto attacks, maybe. And um, then you can throw a grenade and that'll definitely get you those two extra auto attacks. And there's a very long chain that you can put into the enemy considering that you basically just told them to fuck off for... Um, what is that? You caught them with the nade. So you've been sitting on them for 12 seconds plus 6 seconds plus like 7.5 seconds. Uh, like 25 seconds or something stupid like that. What am I doing? I have a calculator here. Well, I had a calculator until I pissed me off and then I went away. Um, 12 seconds for the bubble plus... Uh, damn it, what is it? 6-second uh, repent. Okay, cool. Uh, plus another 6-second stun. Sweet. Uh, plus another like uh, 1.5 seconds or even if you're using the big one because you really want somebody dead it would be an um, 2.5 seconds but yeah you're sitting on them for like 25 seconds I'm just say a nice round 25 seconds of time um, but you're not gaining that much out of that but in season of discovery if you take something like divine storm and crusader strike uh holy fucking shit what are we even looking at at that point um, at that point, your attack sequence is you closed with the enemy and you, like, crusader striked him and then he CC'd you and then you bubbled off the CC and you divine stormed him and then you judged him and then you crusader striked him and then you divine stormed him and then you crusader striked him again and then you repented him and then you healed yourself and then you bitch slapped him again and oh, by the way, here's another divine storm and another crusader strike. And oh, by the way, enjoy this six-second stun with more Divine Storms and more Crusader Strikes. And it's just like, Jesus fucking Christ, you're just going to maul people to death. And that's basically the short and sweet of it. Seal of Martyrdom doesn't do much for you under those circumstances compared to what Divine Storm is going to do, to, uh, do for you under those circumstances. Now, it's highly advised. Notice I didn't mention Exorcism at all. Right? I never said, I didn't talk about Art of War. I didn't talk about Exorcism. Uh, none of that. And we'll get to that in a second. Now, if you take Seal of Martyrdom, you can easily support um, Exorcism, the Art of War. But otherwise, it's a little bit of a GCD issue. But more importantly, you got that, what if they're healing question. Like, if I'm trying to kill a healer, what's more valuable, Art of War and Exorcist or uh, Rebuke and, like, you know, um, Sacred Shield? Or, hell, you could take Rebuke. I guess you can't take Exorcism. Melee, Chris, cool down, a holy shock, Exorcism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would take Rebuke and uh, Sacred Shield at that point. Uh, possibly Guarded by the Light. Uh, it's not the worst idea in the world. 
Uh, actually, I wouldn't advise that because we're going to heal ourselves in this combo. What am I talking about here? Um, so let's fit this up properly here. You don't want Art of War. And you want Rebuke. Because of this, so at this point, you have to ask yourself some questions, right? Um, the first one is, are we taking Sheath of Light um, for... Uh, what's the advantage of taking Sheath of Light over Enlightened Judgments? And are we taking Exorcism, Art of War... Or are we taking Rebuke, uh, Sacred Shield? Like, what are we doing here and why? And I'm actually a big fan. Your ideal 1v1 uh, Paladin combo is a Deep Rat Paladin. You will take Rebuke. It's just worth more damage uh, uh, for you to take Rebuke than it is to take anything else. The problem with uh, the Art of War Exorcist uh, Wombo combo is that Sacred Shield is... She, she's two runes to do, like, one thing. Um, and she'll do it really well. So let's say, <sighs> what I'm about to describe here is a tough conversation because both of them work. Um, it's just one is better than the other. If you're in like a one V one, uh, dueling scenario and the other one is better for, like, just generic PvP, um, all-comers, open-world uh, type scenario. Mm. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we're definitely taking Divine Storm. Um, because we already talked about uh, how long we're able to sit on our enemy. You're able to sit on your enemy for something stupid like, like, like 25 seconds. Right? That is actually ridiculous. That means you're going to easily get off um, three Divine Storms uh, with, with your Wombo Combo, and there's not a damn thing they can do about it. Again, your Wombo Combo is to catch your target with a grenade or a Goblin Mortar. Right? You catch them with the stun. Um, so let's say you grenade them, and you're running towards them, and they PvP trinket away um, the grenade, and then they start running around and getting distance on you and shooting you. Let's say it's a Hunter. For the sake of argument, right? Or the casting spells or doing whatever the hell it is they're doing. Um, just run away in a straight line. Literally just run away in a straight line. Um, you know what the cooldown is. It's literally uh, 15 seconds. So they they trinket it off the, the grenade. You just have to wait 15 seconds before you goblin mortar them. And then you commence the sequence as is. Um, kind of a deal. Uh, goblin mortar, title charm. Um, no machine automatic, um, all that stuff. But the sequence is to catch them uh, with a grenade or, or a netomatic. Um, the, uh, once that stun is off, the very first bit of CC that hits you, um, you just bubble it off. <clears throat> you then sit and bubble for anywhere between 10 to 12 seconds. Uh, 10 seconds is the minimum. Uh, once you come out of the bubble, um, and this bubble is perfect right here because uh, the, the rank 1 Divine Storm lasts exactly 10 seconds. Uh, but you can click it off ahead of time, uh, manually. But once you come out of Divine Storm, you repent them for six seconds. And then uh, after those six seconds, the DR has worn off, so they, they'll, they'll eat a full duration on the next stun, if that makes sense. They're going to eat the full duration of a six-second stun um, after that. And that, in, con in conjunction with uh, a Goblin Mortar or a Tidal Charm uh, Trinket, uh, Goblin Mortar really does come to mind here, um, is going to give you... Um, 25 seconds, uh, 25.5 seconds of um, basically the enemy not being able to do whatever uh, they want. Now, if we're being super realistic with the PvP scenario here, um, you're going to catch them with the three seconds stun, but they will have PvP trinket your first nade. <clears throat> so let's say they PvP trinket your first nade. You run away for the, uh, for the 15 seconds, then you catch them with Goblin Mortar. We have to assume you don't have any, any stuns left uh, whatsoever in the tank. We have to assume you're using like a, a, a net netomatic or a PvP trinket or something. Or you don't have Tidal Charm, basically, even though uh, Tidal Charm uh, would uh, be ideal here. Um, that's still plenty of time. Oh, we also have to assume you only were able to sit in, in bubble for, for 10 seconds. So you sat in bubble for 10 seconds. Uh, then you came out and you repented them. Then you stunned them for 6 seconds and so you got nothing else. Um, that's still 22 seconds. That's still three Divine Storms. That's still something stupid like uh, uh, four Crusader Strikes. You're going to be able to easily get that in there. That's uh, If you took Exorcist, 
Um, and then you didn't even take Art of War. That's going to be like uh, two exorcisms, which is gross, just on the cooldown as is, because it's over 15 seconds. All right, so option one, because everyone's going to, like, oh, why don't I do option one? It's so much damage. Is um, you go Exorcist, Art of War, Sheath of Light, um, Crusader Strike, uh, Divine Storm, and you do the Wombo Combo. Now, this is terrifying. Um, because while you're in bubble and you're divine storming and you're crusader striking and you're auto attacking, if any and your seal command is proccing all over the place, um, if art of war procs at any point in time, you're going to just blast the crap out of them with with more exorcisms. And you're just going to do shit tons of damage. The reason why I don't like this build is because if you roll up on an enemy healer and they see you bubble. Um, their correct course of action is going to be to spam heals into themselves, uh, until you, to, to, to mitigate your, your, your bubble DPS. And you're doing a lot of DPS while you're sitting on them, uh, with bubble. Because again, you're, you've done like, uh, inside a bubble, you're going to do like three Crusader Strikes, two Divine Storms, and like, uh, two Judgments, and like, uh, two Exorcisms. Uh, two to three Exorcisms. Absolutely fucking disgusting amounts of damage. And they're just going to sit there, and they're going to laugh at you, and they're going to heal in your fucking face. Um, <clears throat> now, if RNGesus goes your way, and you get a bunch of crits, and you get to click the exorcism button a bunch of times, you'll probably punch through their healing and just blow the crap out of them. Uh, Lord knows uh, spell pushback uh, will also get them uh, pretty badly. Um, the other thing about... Um, the reason why we're using Seal of Command and not Seal of Martyrdom... Um, is uh, uh, Seal of Martyrdom really doesn't let you use um, Seal of Justice all that much, whereas you can definitely um, sacrifice a Seal of Command for Seal of Justice procs, right? So Divine Storm does not proc um, Seal of Command. Uh, Crusader Strike does not proc Seal of Command, um, <clears throat> but it will proc Seal of Justice. And what this means is, even if you are the Exorcist Art of War Paladin, you can sacrifice your Seal of Command <clears throat> with some free GCDs in there and uh, go for interrupts with uh, Seal of Justice, which will be worth way more than, than Seal of Command procs um, at that point in time. This is assuming they eventually nerf Seal of Martyrdoms, like double procking uh, Exorcism thing, which I think they, they'll eventually do, which is just kind of retarded. Um, currently in the game. If they don't, then, you know, maybe Seal of Martyrdom is the way to go, but honestly, I think Divine Storm is 100% the way to go here. I don't really like this. Um, <clears throat> perfectly viable, but I don't like it for, for a large number of reasons. Uh, the first reason I don't like is um, Enlightened Judgments is absolutely amazing. Like, again, with that, that whole tactical um, spell pushback um, element, um, I just absolutely love Enlightened Judgments um, from from a 1v1 perspective at least, but she, Sheath of Light is a, is a really good second. Um, Sheath of Light also, the other thing I don't like about the Art of War thing is it's kind of a 50-50 gamble, right? Either you get the crits in abundance or it, it's like, it's like crit, critting for a Deep Rep Paladin is like a feast in, or famine type deal. And this makes sense mathematically because um, one out of four times... Uh, how do I put this? Mm. Let's say you had a 50% critical strike chance, okay? And you did four auto attacks, okay? Uh, that's, that's not true. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to explain a mathematical principle that basically says... If I attack my enemy 10 times... 25% of the time... I will get below average rolls, like really, really shitty RNG. Half the time, I will get, you know, average RNG, 50% of the time. And then 25% of the time, I will get above average RNG. And what this means is that about 50% of the time, maybe only like 40 or 30% of the time with the Art of War build, will she proc um, uh, like crazy? So the seal commands will be procking all over the place. Um, the, the the critical strikes will be will be will be flowing in, and you'll be able to exorcism the crap out of your enemy, and they'll just explode, and it'll be amazing. But it's only going to happen like thirty percent of the time, and since you kind of went all in with bubble with that, that's not the greatest scenario in my in my mind uh, in the world. Uh, meanwhile, sheath of light 
uh, does not synergize as well as you would think. She synergized really well offensively with this build, but she doesn't synergize very well defensively with this build. So other options, of course, are you go Rebuke, and you go Sacred Shield. Now the thing about Sacred Shield is she actually has the same spell power ratio behind the shield as a Flash of Light does. She has 43% um, spell power ratio, um, which means she synergizes rather spectacularly from a defensive perspective uh, with Sheath of Light. Um, to the point where at like level 60, she's going to be like a, a 400 HP shield uh, with Sheath of Light with that 400 uh, plus spell power. Um, yeah, she'll be like a 400 HP shield every six seconds, which is absolutely amazing. Um, what do we lose here? Uh, we lose Exorcism and we lose Art of War, <coughs> which is really bad from a DPS perspective. Um, but you gain a lot in Rebuke. And here's where some really scary stuff comes in. So, what am I trying to describe here? Do, do, do. They keep changing rebuke. What is she at now? Okay, yeah, interrupts. What the fuck is your cooldown? I don't give a shit. 15 second cooldown, 3 second interrupt. Okay, cool. So, if you actually look at the timeline of events. So, you caught them with a grenade, uh, you bubbled the first piece of CC that came your way, and you're starting to, 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 to smack the enemy around. You're starting to do damage on them, right? You're getting your Crusader Strike on cooldown, you're getting your Divine Storm on cooldown, your auto attack is on cooldown, you're just sla you're slapping away at them. Um, the enemy starts going for a heal. Um, you let them heal for almost two seconds, and then you tell them to shut the hell up with a rebuke uh, for three seconds. And then after those three seconds of rebuke, if you're counting, we're about five seconds in, they start healing again. Um, two seconds later, after they've started healing again, seven seconds has ticked by. Uh, keep in mind, we only need to sit in bubble for, um, for 10 seconds before we're able to repent the target and, and uh, start syncing up everything again. Um, get the DR off duration which means it becomes very easy for you as a paladin to to have a crusader strike and an auto attack um, held back with um, and just activate seal of justice and just crusader strike the target with seal of justice. So you can't interrupt them with a rebuke anymore because your rebuke's on a cooldown, but you could, you, you're going to have something stupid like um, it's... <sighs> It's the swing speed of your weapon in percent chance to interrupt the target from Seal of Justice. So if you have a 3.8 speed weapon, you're going to have a 38% chance to stun the target for two seconds. Okay, 38%. Okay, 38%. All right. If, it's this, if this is a Crusader Strike auto attack, that's going to roll two 38% uh, chances. And if, I, if any one of those come up a stun, you're going to stun them for two seconds. If both of them come up uh, uh, as a stun, um, you're going to stun them for one second because Seal of Justice uh, does operate on its own diminishing returns. So you'll end up stunning them um, for two seconds um, on average. Literally, it's like a, what is that? That's, that's, that's over a 70% chance, damn near an 80% chance to stun them. Um, so there's a really good chance that you've rebuked the first, um, you've rebuked the first heal, they're trying to get off a second heal, and then you, uh, Seal of Justice stun them, and then they're not get, ever going to make it to the third heal, because by the time they come out of, the, uh, out of that stun and they can possibly heal themselves again, they'll probably be in the middle of healing, and then they just eat a repent. And then once that repent is over with, out comes a six second stun and, and we're off to the races, right? So very quickly you get upwards of like an 80% chance. It's not quite an 80% chance. It's like a 70, ugh, I just, I'm leaning back in the chair and trying to relax and talk about this. 38 times two equals, thank you. Yeah, so you have a 76% uh, chance um, that you just didn't let anybody heal for like ever. And this isn't about chaining uh, a rebuke into rebuke at 15 seconds. This is just about uh, not letting them heal until you get the DR reset and you can stun them for like another 7.5 seconds and do like a shit ton of damage on them, right? This is why I prefer the rebuke wombo combo and why I prefer to stay the hell away from um, seal of... 
do 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 um, to stay the hell away from um, seal of martyrdom um, because uh, uh, it's it's much less expensive to have to sacrifice in that combo you sacrificed uh, one <coughs> seal proc in your art of command to go for the the seal of justice instead right. Um, I'd rather make that sacrifice than, than the seal of martyrdom sacrifice. It's still really fucking tired. Uh, what else is there to talk about here? And yeah, so that'll work spectacularly with healers. It basically means that while you're doing this insane rotation on them of, what was it again? Uh, it's something like, it's like five auto attacks and three divine storms and four crusader strikes and like four four judgments or something retarded like that it's ugh. I'm saying, <laughs> that's that's one hell of a wreck bomb uh during this entire time they just can't hard cast any heals um that's basically what rebuke does for you um whereas if you have art of war it's fine but you're you're not going to be art of warring with seal of martyrdom because you really need to shut down the heals so you're going to be like art of warring with seal of justice that doesn't sound very good um, it, it becomes really hard to shut down um, um, all the healing. And then, of course, worst case scenario, you're only shutting down uh, one of the heals. Um, but then probably RNG uh, half the time uh, uh, when your seal of justice fails, um, RNG will be there for you anyways. If you're like super MLG, you could, cancel, you could just repent them even though you're still in a bubble. Just repent them and then cancel a bubble and then stand there and look stupid if you really, really don't want them to heal. Um, it just means that when they come out of the repent, they're going to have like three seconds so they can do something uh, b before you can stun them, which is which is not ideal. Um, but if you've identified like a priest, for example, um, if you've identified that all they have is their fear uh, to really um, do anything to you, and they've already feared you, right? Like the, uh, you you grenaded them, um, they they feared you, you bubbled the fear. Um, you have no. Um, I don't want to double entendre here, but you have no concern, no fear whatsoever of just r repenting them and then canceling the bubble and standing there and looking stupid for an extra three seconds before um, stunning them again and giving them the good news. Um, so it is possible with Art of War to shut down incoming healing, but it's, it's just going to be really, really hard. This build, of course, is... She's theoretically weaker against enemy melee classes, right? Because Rebuke doesn't do anything for you against melee classes. Um, <clears throat> however, that's not really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Why? Because you have Sheath of Light and you have um, uh, Sacred Shield. Melee classes hate Sacred Shield. Well, all classes hate Sacred Shield, but melee classes in particular hate Sacred Shield. And I'm fairly certain that most melee classes are not going to enjoy uh, your attentions over that long of a period of time uh, beating the crap out of them, like just rotating on them with your abilities um, for that length of time, uh, whether you have Art of War or not, whether you have Exorcism or not. I don't think they're going to survive that. Because that's like a wreck bomb and then change, right? That's that's five auto attacks, three divine storms, uh, four crusader strikes, four judgments. Like, what the fuck are we... And the judgments actually slap because you have um, Sheath of Light. Uh, crusader strike is not going to fuck around. I mean, um, yeah, Judgment of Crusader is not going to fuck around. There's there's so many stuns there, right? Like, how, how, It's like only one of those judgments wasn't... Um, in it, is it only one of them? It might be two. Yeah, it's it's literally only one of them. If you really want them dead, you just uh, um, you uh, you throw the big one at them because it extends the the stun time past eight seconds, and your judgment's on an eight second cooldown. Uh, so for example, they're repented. The repent's about to fall off, so you judge um, Crusader uh, uh, judgment of Crusader into them for double damage. It'll hit really fucking hard uh, thanks to Sheath of Light. Um, then you stun them for six seconds. Then you the big one them for another uh, 2.5 seconds. Well, that's 8.5 seconds. Congratulations. Your command's off of judgment's off of cooldown again. So you smack them again. Uh, really scary stuff. I don't, th I don't think they're going to survive. And if they do survive, they're, they're going to die very, very, very shortly after. And if you recall correctly, we still have an entire trinket that we haven't used. 
because in theory we caught them with a grenade they pvp trinket it we just uh dicked around for 15 seconds and then we goblin mortared them and went all in on bubble and it just is what it is so i'm a big fan of going uh as a deep rep paladin uh basically pretending you're uh, a reckoning paladin and going all in on bubble and uh using repent in that manner I thought about doing it other ways, and it's just not as effective, um, unfortunately. Just not as effective, unfortunately. But yeah, so I, I really like the rebuke. Um, again, yeah, you are weaker against enemy melee classes, but uh, it's it's actually pretty pretty terrifying. If I was in like battlegrounds, um, for example, um, exorcism might be better than rebuke, but it's really hard to part ways with sacred shield sacred shield just does so much for you especially with sheath of light if we're talking about duels um you may or may not dick around with sheath of light um it really really depends uh again the the range judgments um their spell pushback um uh, uh potential and just the tempo advantage is absolutely fucking insane like do not pass go do not collect uh 200 levels of fucking insane um, so for example, <clears throat> let's say that shaman is literally, it'll be like that mage wants to sheep you. Well, it's a 1.5 second, uh, um, 33 or 36 yard range cast or something stupid like that. Right. It's like a 30, uh, 33 yard range cast with, um, um, leeway, uh, 1.5 second cast, um, you can easily punch through their shield, do damage to them, make it a 2.5 second cast, and just uh, walk a walk a, a, um, a away from them. You just run away in a straight line while blasting the shit out of them, and they'll be like, what the fuck, why can't I sheep this paladin? Um, that's what Enlightened Judgments does for you. Um, if it's a shaman, he's like, I want to lava burst this guy at the 30, uh, at, at like the, the 25 yard range. And then you're just like, okay, well, I'm going to kill your grounding totem with my judgment. And then I'm going to bitch slap you with an exorcist. And uh, I'm just going to, or an exorcism. And then I'm just going to uh, run away. Um, and then the shaman's like, what the fuck? Um, he eventually has to stop and heal himself. And that's basically when you make your move. So against, it's, it's really hard to tell which one is better. So I like this build. This build is really good, but you definitely end up using a Sheath of Light because you don't have any Exorcist. Um, the Enlightened Judgments has to be paired with Exorcism, um, unfortunately. Um, so if you're a Reckoning Paladin, for example, you're definitely using Enlightened Judgments. Um, you would use uh, Exorcism. There's no point in, in your Rebuke because when you touch something, it dies. Um, there's also no point in going Art of War because when you touch something it dies, so you want um, Sheath of Light. So this would be a closer to your uh, Ret Reckoning Paladin build. And uh, Ret Reckoning, um, if you have Seal of Command, I would, eh, you might want Seal of Command in the Wreck Bomb, but it's, it's just as, as well to go um, Seal of Martyrdom uh, in the grand scheme of things. Horde of Lordaeron also isn't the worst thing in the world if you want to do... Um, if you're doing a Reckoning Paladin build, you end up using uh, Seal of Command. Uh, you don't even want Crusader Strike in a Reckoning Paladin build. It's 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 Reckoning Paladin's a completely different ball game. Yeah, so this would be closer to a Reckoning Paladin build. You literally take uh, Enlightened Judgments for all the spell pushback benefits um, and the tactical maneuvering. You take um, uh, Hand of Reckoning to um, make you even tougher. Basically, it's worth like a 10% increase in your HP. Uh, you take Sheath of Light because it should also makes you even tougher. It's like another 10% increase in HP. Um, you take Horn of Lordaeron because you're going to be using um, Seal, um, Seal of Kings. And Horn of Lordaeron and Seal of Kings end up double dipping. And you're going to be using Seal of Command. Uh, so you don't really need Seal of Martyrdom. Reckoning is, is just its own, its own animal in the grand scheme of things. So anyways, I'm really tired. Um, and just want to get this video out there as quickly as possible. And, uh, but yeah, I've been talking about this for almost 50 minutes, Jesus. Uh, yeah, but basically the TLDR is use your bubble offensively. Like, uh, catch them in a stun, bitch slap them, uh, bubble for at least 10 seconds, uh, rebuke them, uh, hodge stun them, uh, force cancel your bubble if you have to, and then repent them for six seconds. Go for a holy light, or don't even force cancel it. Just repent them, 
uh, after 10 seconds and then go for a holy light bubble will wear off um, your all your all your cooldowns are are still ticking away your divine storm is coming off cooldown your crusader strike is coming off cooldown your exorc uh, you don't have exorcism you have rebuke instead <coughs> um, once you're holy once you've holy lighted yourself um, your auto attack is coming off a cooldown um, once repent is is up on its timer you give them you give them the good news crusader strike auto attack um, uh, hammer of justice stun uh, you probably even have a PvP trinket in there, so if they throw anything at you, you just PvP trinket it away. It's it's disgusting, um, but in a very real sense, you're you're using bubble extremely offensively as a deep rep paladin. There's almost no purpose to using in season of discovery. There's almost no reason to use bubble um, defensively whatsoever, as either a reckoning or a um, a uh, a deep rep paladin. Uh, to be perfectly, perfectly honest with you. <clears throat> All right, what do you do if bubbles on cooldown? Um, well, that really depends on a lot of situations. It's like, well, what's the PvP environment? Are we talking about you don't have bubble in a battlegrounds environment? Okay, well, in battlegrounds, you've got exorcism and you've got like art of war and you just kind of wade into the enemy and you go, RNG, Jesus, be with me kind of a deal. Um, usually the best thing to do if you don't have, um, bubble available is to use your bop, believe it or not. Just bop for a few seconds, wait for your cooldowns to come back, and then cancel bop when you're ready and just start rotating on people again. Um, but in battleground environments and in chaotic, uh, um, PvP scenarios, nobody really has all their cooldowns. So it's, it's just do damage, basically, until people die. And if you're stuck with Rebuke, it's not the worst thing in the world. You just find the nearest enemy healer and sit on them with Rebuke and uh, Hodge Stun and, uh, uh, or Seal of Justice, and they're not going to be happy. Um, yep, 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 yep. Anyways, I'll end the video here at Deus Vault, boys. I really looked into other combinations uh, for Deep Retribution Paladin, like, you know, like a Jousting meta and like, you know, oh, if this crits and that crits. Um, I'll pull the I'll pull the trigger on some offense and yada yada yada. Uh, not not super necessary, because the traditional way of fighting as a deep rat paladin is you're very R and Jesus dependent, and you're looking for a good R and G lay on the connection with the enemy. Again, you catch them with repents or you catch them with bubble, you bitch slap them, and then you look for like is it good enough rng for me to go um all in with a six second stun into like a grenade for 7.5 seconds of of time on target so traditionally you'd like catch them with repent you'd run up to them uh no you wouldn't run up to them what am i talking about you would repent them at 30 yards immediately he i'll put a one holy light into yourself and then you would run over to them and you would bitch slap them because it's 2.5 seconds for your holy light and it's 3.8 seconds for your weapon. Uh, I'll show you the math here. It's not it's not repent, run over, and then heal yourself. That doesn't work. Um, right, so it's 2.5 for holy light and then it is 3.8 for your weapon. And oh look, that's 6.3 seconds, right? So you repent them, you immediately go over, uh, go for a holy light, you run over to towards the enemy, um, and basically you just judge bitch slap them. Um, easy peasy, uh, lemon squeezy. If you don't need to holy light yourself, it gets a lot easier. Uh, based upon what that damage output looks like, uh, you may, you pull the trigger on some offense, but you're quote unquote pulling the trigger on offense um, was just a six second hod stun and into like a goblin border or, or a grenade or something like that. And then you've got like bubble and PVP uh, trinket or gnomish nomadic or tidal charm to, to fall back on, right? Um, <clears throat> but it's always been the case that you can use bubble significantly more offensively um, in the matchup. You just don't really, you, you're just super all in at that point and you can only, you're not even all in. Yeah, you kind of are. Um, there just wasn't any gain from it, if that makes any sense. It's like, well, what are we doing here? Like, rogues have vanish. So it's like, okay, I bubble and the rogue vanishes. Like, like whoop-de-fucking-do. Like, are, are we wasting our, our existence here? Like, like what's going on? 
So it only really worked against warriors. Um, everybody else could heal. Uh, hunters can could outrun you because they would. Uh, you have an eight second judgment and like a seven second auto attack while you're in bubble. How, all he has to do is be like, "Did you judge me recently? Did you hit me re with an auto attack recently? Cool. I'm just gonna go aspect of the cheetah and run the fuck away now." That used to be things the enemy could do, or the healers would just heal in your face. So it was just a. a it just was non-viable sequence, and so you would never do it. Um, but in Season of Discovery, they're like, here, have Rebuke. Um, have Crusader Strike on a six-second cooldown. Have Divine Storm on a, on a two-second cooldown. Have Exorcism. Have Art of War. Um, have all this crap. And it's just like, okay, all right. Well, I guess we're just going to bubble and then uh, start rotating on people and uh, see if they enjoy that. And uh, no hard cast healing for you um, for a million years. Uh, no running away anymore. Um, good luck, good luck, good luck, sir. Um, oh, look, I have an extra PvP trinket, so I'm just gonna, like, you know, put a poison on this stupid rogue so he can't, uh, vanish on me. Well, actually, if they vanish, you just Divine Storm them, wouldn't you? <laughs> He's like, oh, look, that's cute, vanish, Divine Storm, like, fuck, he came out of vanish. Or if you're a human, it would be even worse, because you would activate your racial and then Divine Storm, and yeah, you're gonna catch him. And... Ugh, just, just really, really nasty stuff. And even if the rogue gets away from you for like a million years, um, the poison will pop them out of combat. And then you, again, you're catching them with repent, and then you get to introduce them to the six second stun wombo combo. They're, they're not going anywhere. Um, so, yeah, so Season of Discovery just changes things. Uh, anyways, I'm going to be here and uh, Deus Full Boys. Really, really tired is what it is. What do you want? Okay, I'm I'm ending a video. Is that okay with you? All right, love you. All right, day is whole, boys.